we cannot know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a very common objection. That look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beyond our understanding. We should not talk about Allah. We should just talk about Muhammad and Ali Muhammad alayhi salam because they are within our reach. Salawat ala Muhammad. My question is, can anyone here stand up and claim that they can understand Muhammad and Ali Muhammad? Is there a man yet born who can say that I have ma'rifah of Nur Muhammadiyah? Is there? You will not find a Muslim unless he is a madman who will tell you that I know who Hussein is. I will tell you who is Hussein. Is there anyone who can say I have ma'rifah of Hussein? So that means now let's not talk about the Imams as well because we don't have their ma'rif. Right? Let's just talk about ourselves. So here's the problem. The Quran is there, but I can't talk about it because we're not supposed to understand this. Only the Imams can understand that, right? They were not here to teach us about the Quran. The Quran is only for them. Now when I listen to what the Imams are saying, I look at Nahjul Balagha, I see Amir al-Mu'minin is talking about Tawheed. Every other sermon he's praising Allah, describing things in very deep philosophical terms. I look at Kitab al-Irshad of Sheikh Mufid. I find Imam al-Sadiq al is having philosophical debates with atheists. I look at Sheikh Saduq's Uyun Akhbar al-Rida, two volumes. The Imam is having debates with people of all kinds of faiths, deep, deep philosophical debates on proof of God, existence of God, and so on and so forth. I look at Hadith Mufaddal of the sixth Imam. Again, there is profound ideas being taught there. I look at the Hadith of the sixth Imam. He says, Allah revealed Surah Al-Ikhlas, Surah Qul Hu Allahu Ahad, and the last verses of Surah Al-Hadid, because he knew there will come a future generation in time who will be able to understand the meaning of these verses. What do I do with all this hadith? So I have the Quran, but I'm not supposed to comment on it. I have the hadith, but we're not supposed to talk about it. We're only supposed to talk about the Imams themselves. The question is, is this fair to the Imams? Are we being fair to them? And that is why I have said this time and time again, that when people ask me to define the Prophet and the Ahlul Bayt, who are they? My standard definition to everyone is, first and foremost, they are teachers of Tawheed. They are teachers of Tawheed. The main reason why any messenger of God came was to guide people back to God. To show them how to journey towards God. And we said that journey is not physical. And the Imams as the heirs to the Prophets, their mission is the same. They are teachers of Tawheed. Now, is it not ironic that our Imams have the most profound and the deepest understanding of Tawheed, but our enemies call us grave worshippers? And the most repulsive understanding of Tawheed is the Tawheed of the Wahhabi. Because the Wahhabi's God sits on a throne. On Thursday nights he physically comes down and then he goes up. On the day of judgment he puts his left foot in the fire of hell. Until the fire of hell says enough, enough. When the fire of hell says halim, hal min mazid, hal min mazid. You know, are there any more? Yawma naqulu li jahannam halim tala'ati. Then God puts his left foot in the fire of hell and hell says, enough, enough, O oh Lord, because his left foot is MashaAllah, right? The most repulsive Tawheed is that of the Wahhabi, but he is called Muwahid. And the highest understanding of Tawheed is mine and I am called a grave worshipper. Where did we drop the ball? Where? I will tell you where we dropped the ball. We dropped the ball because we took the Imams but not their teachings. We took the Imams, but we, not, we, we didn't take their teachings. Even when we take the praise right, from our Imams, who is the Imam we praise the most? Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. We say Ali is the madhar ilahi. He manifests divine attributes, right? There are people who speak of him in glowing terms of how Ali demonstrates things, why people were misguided and they thought Ali was God, right? When Ibrahim alayhi salam challenges Nimrud and tells him that my God brings the dead back to life, the king kills a man and spares another one and says, I can do the same thing. Then how does Ibrahim defeat him? He says, my Lord brings the sun from the east and sets it in the west. You bring it from the other side if you are God. Ali did that. 
So he manifests things that give people reason to say he is God, right? But who is Ali? Now what we do is we praise him and praise him and praise him to say, look at how God manifested his power, his knowledge, his ability in Ali. Amazing, definitely. But then we stop there. We forget that the reason why Ali came was to point us to Allah. We said, don't talk about Allah. That is too deep. And in doing that, we are unfair to Ali. Because if he came now, he would be disappointed. And I've given this example before. That if you take an infant in your hand and you see a full moon before you. And you point to the full moon. The infant will look at your finger. He will not look at the moon. Because he doesn't have the maturity to look that far. And the more you wag your finger and say, look, look, look at that beauty. You've got to look at your finger. Everything besides God is an ayah. So Ali is saying, look at Allah. And he does a miracle. Look at Allah. He lifts the gate. He is showing you the power of Allah. We are looking at Ali. We are not looking at Allah. He is trying to show us something. And I will give you proof for this. When you ask Amir al-Mu'mineen himself to describe himself in the most glowing terms after the demise of the Prophet, blessings and peace be on him, what does he say? He says, "Ma lillahi ayatun akbar minni." Allah does not have a sign or an ayah greater than I. I am the greatest sign of Allah. He describes himself. Undoubtedly, he is Nabaul Azim. He is the greatest news of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala after the Prophet. But when you praise Ali and you bring him to that level, after that as well, let mankind see the God that Ali introduces in Nahjul Balagh. So that they understand who are the rightful owners of Tawheed. That Tawheed should come from the teaching of the Ahlul Bayt and not from those who are their enemies.